of day, friends. It is me, HL Mod Tech, and today, my friends, we're going to use my.sketchup to make our own Glowforge glider. So, my friends, let's get cracking. To get to my.sketchup, simply type my.sketchup in a browser window. When you click this link, you will get a chance to sign in. I choose sign in with Google. If you're in a classroom, you may have a SketchUp for Schools app. They work similar. The difference is this one works even if you're not at a school, and it saves to a Trimble server location instead of your Google Drive. Either way, when we get to this screen, we must click Simple Template Millimeters because our design is a special size. Click on the person in the middle and hit Delete. Click Untitled, and we need to name the project. Click on their little SketchUp folder, and then down in the bottom, type in the name. I am going to title mine Glider MDH4 because I've made this once or twice. Friends, SketchUp is a click and release program. So we click the toolbar, and we click again to choose the tool we want. This location is called the origin, is where we start designing today. I want you to click and release so that mouse button is not pressed. If you just type 480 comma 280 and press enter, it records those dimensions and makes that exact shape down on your screen. We're going to click on a cool choice here. Instead of orbit, we're going to fit view and it zooms right in. If you roll your scroll wheel back, it lets you see it. If you switch to the orbit mode, you can look at it from an angle. We do not want the middle of this. This is just our guideline for how big the Glowforge bed is. We do want to prove our measurements, and we're going to do that with the dimension tool. Click the origin, click the end, stretch it out to prove you've got a 480 millimeter build area. Up in the top corner, click again, click the bottom, stretch it out, and prove you've also got 280 here. Remember, it's one, two, three clicks to make those little locations. We are going to use those same techniques to draw our fuselage. In the area where we can build, click a rectangle, stretch it out, and then I want you to type 300 comma 15 and press enter. This is our fuselage shape. Now you can choose other numbers later. I'm just going to choose 300 because I know that it works. I'm going to scroll in and look at the front of this and I'm going to draw another rectangle and I'm going to make this one 40 comma 12. And this is going to be the front where there's a catch so the rubber band holds. I want to get rid of this line right here so I simply click the eraser and get rid of it. I want to click on the pencil tool and I want to draw a angle so that it's more aerodynamic. I'm going to hit erase and get rid of that corner and now we've got a way to launch our glider. You could choose to taper the front end a little but I am going to warn you that this area is a spot that quite often fails on our gliders because the front of these cardboard gliders are kind of weak. We do want an area back here that we can hold on to so once again we're going to use that rectangle tool and this time I'm going to pull it out and I'm just going to type 10 comma 30 and press enter. It went the wrong way so I'm going to do control Z. You'll notice right now it's stretching in every direction. That is because of the modifiers on the bottom. If we tap control it switches to the normal uh, direction that we want to go and I'm going to do that 30 comma 10 instead of what I typed last time. I'm going to switch to my pencil tool and I'm going to make that shape aerodynamic as well. Notice now it will not catch. I simply use the eraser and I cut that off and get rid of that line as well. That is going to be the fuselage for our sweet little aircraft. I'm going to make two of those. So right now I'm going to triple click. So that was one, two, three clicks. I'm going to switch to the sweet little move button. I'm going to grab this corner up here. But while it's moving, I'm going to tap control, which is the copy modifier. And this is how you copy. When you click and set it down, you get another one. I'm going to make a third fuselage. I can decide later if I want to glue all three together. But it's so easy to cut them, and they fit so well. I'm going to put them on there anyhow. Let's add a wing real quickly. 
I'm going to do the rectangle. I'm going to start out here in the front. I'm going to click and release, and I'm going to type 180, comma, 60. This is going to be half of a wing for my glider. I want the edges to be sloped, so I'm just going to start a line, and I'm going to stretch it back to wherever I want. I'm going to hit escape because I don't want to draw from that spot. I want to draw from this spot. And I'm going to taper this wing to exactly where I want as well. I'm going to hit escape again. And then I'm going to find the amazing arc tool. I want the two-point arc. So I can click on the first end, second end, stretch that out exactly how I like it. And my nifty little wing design is complete. I can erase these outside edges. And you can see that that is a fantastic little wing. I don't know for sure if it'll fly, but I do know for sure that I'm going to have fun building it. Once again, I need two of these, so I'm going to click once, twice. It selects everything. I'm going to switch to move. I'm going to grab that corner. As it moves by itself, I'm going to hit that modifier. You can see on the bottom where it says control is copy. And I'm going to just set it up there on top. I'm going to switch to that select tool. If I triple click or double click, I can grab that. And I'm going to hit M for move. Now I'm using shortcuts. And I'm going to just move it so it's close to the exact same spot as the other. So it's a little quicker when we print. Real quickly, same trick for the tail fin. I'll click back near this area so I can kind of see how long I'm making it. I'm going to type 50 comma 80 for how large it is. And then I'm going to use the pencil to taper it the way that I want. So I'm going to go from the midpoint to the midpoint and from the midpoint to the midpoint. When I hit the erase tool, you can see that this cuts off pretty nifty. As I look at it, this is quite long though. So watch this. I can change my design by simply hitting move clicking on a piece that's easy to move like this is pretty simple back here to move that line straight along the red axis and I like that a little bit better let's see if I can move this point back as well and yes I can so now if I double click it grabs all the shape I'm gonna do move and I'm gonna just line it up with this corner so it's a little more visually appealing as I check it out and let's wrap it up by drawing that vertical stabilizer. Once again, I'm going to start with a rectangle. This time I'm going to make it 25, 50. I'm going to use my little pencil tool. And I'm going to cut it however I want for my vertical stabilizer. That's what I'm going to choose. When I hit erase, I can take a peek at it. It looks a little larger than my other design. So I'm going to shrink it on this side right here. So notice that whole line turns blue when I grab the midpoint. So I can just push it back. And then the same thing up here, I'm moving to the midpoint. And then I want to make sure I stay on that green axis as I shrink it to the size that I want. My friends, right there is a cardboard glider. It fits totally in the area. So now we can grab our outside edges and we can delete them because we do not need them. We do need to make this all have thickness so that we can export it. So what we do is click push pull, click on our first shape and let go, type the number four so that it's four millimeters thick because that's how thick the cardboard is. For the second one, if you just start lifting it and then touch the end point of the first one, it infers that exact same measurement to all the pieces. So notice red arrow, touch the corner, snap, snap snap and snappity snap it's that easy to pick a measurement and attach it to all of them I want these two pieces to interlock so this one's gonna slide in this groove watch this trick let's zoom in to this part by fitting the view and we're gonna cut a notch out of it my friends it is this easy so friends click on this corner and when you start drawing, if you get this rectangle, make sure you tap control to switch. And then our rectangle is going to be 10 millimeters, comma, 4 millimeters, so that we've got a notch that we can slide in. Switch to push pull, and then push that face down to the bottom edge so the notch is ready to be put in. 
we're going to switch to the rectangle tool again. We're going to go to the midpoint. When you find it, it will be cyan. This time, we want that special rectangle that goes in every direction. And we are going to type 20. Notice we doubled the distance. Uh, it goes left and right, and I'll show you why in a second. Then we do the 4 and press Enter. Went the wrong direction, so I'm going to do Control Z. I'm going to do that again. I'm going to tap Control. And this time I'm going to do 4, 20. This is the exact same direction that notch is. Notice we've got 10 this way and 10 out in the empty space. So we just simply erase the empty space. I'm going to spin around and look at it from the back so you can see this push-pull better. And then I'm going to use the short foot cut for push-pull, which is P. And I want to touch it to this endpoint right there. Notice it cut out that awesome little endpoint so that these can slide into each other and it makes it easier to glue. We could cut notches for our wings, which does make it a lot more sturdy, but this way we can put our wings anywhere along here as we try and find our perfect area of balance. So friends, we've got our glider built. Make sure you've saved it. And then we need to export it as an STL. When you choose export, if you're in my classroom, the STL file you actually want on your computer. So just put it in the H folder. It's got your name and hit save. The reason we do this is because STLs are not what the Glowforge use. To fix that, we are going to go to Tinkercad. If you've never been in Tinkercad before, simply use Sign In with Google. When you get a chance, hit this little button and choose Create New Design. When your design launches, we need to make it Glowforge size. Click on Edit Grid, Backspace, Type 480, same as we did in the other project. And then on the length, make it 280. When you choose Update Grid, it'll look large again. Change it to say Glider. Remember, mine was MDH4. I'm also going to put SketchUp after this, so I know where I actually built it. The magic part of this is we can import our STL. Remember, we put it in the H drive. There's my Glider MDH4. I keep the exact scale and hit import, and poof, your design appears. Once it's in, we can send it to the Glowforge for laser cutting with the awesome SVG export. This time, if you're in my room, you put it in the STL folder, and bam, your design is ready to be cut out. In the Glowforge, you simply hit upload, find that cool project. Remember, mine was in the STL folder. My cardboard is refreshing. I just opened the lid. I'm going to hit enter settings, and then I use a 1-200, 100 speed, 4 millimeter setting for cutting my cardboard. And there you can see it is refreshed, so I can place it where it's supposed to be. Once again, 1-200, 400. I do need to select the material. My material is uncertified. It's just free cardboard. Hit submit. When I've got it lined up exactly as I want, I can send it to the printer with that sweet little print button. Let's go see what we get. All right, friends, this is everybody's favorite part, magic button time. And there you have it, friends. Three minutes later, we've got parts we can glue together to make a sweet glider. Alrighty, friends. So I'm going to make a separate video for the assembly and the flights. But uh, now you know how easy it is to use My.SketchUp or SketchUp for Schools to make a sweet custom cardboard glider. Friends, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. If you got a question, comment, or suggestion, add it down below. If you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Smash that subscribe button. And last but not least, hit that notification bell if you want to be the first to know when there's a brand new video from me, HL Mod Tech. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.